How did you become so completely bilingual? I'm not. I'm pretending to be bilingual, but I'm working on it. Um, I, my parents are Irish. They arrived in, in Canada because my dad's first job after specializing in radiology in Boston uh, via Dublin was Ottawa. So we come to Ottawa, and he figures, my goodness, it's a bilingual country, as is Ireland. You have to learn Irish. He learned German as well. He thought, we should learn some French. So they sent us to French schools in Windsor, as it turned out, where we ended up. So we did primary school, all the family, you know, the kids, we did most of our primary education with French. But because it's Canada, and they're Irish immigrants, pardon me, and they wanted to, you know, assimilate, they then sent me to a boys Anglican private school so that I'd figure out how both cultures really worked. It's just enough to mess you up forever. And you forget all your French. But subsequently, I've played characters like Trudeau, or the guy in Bon Cop, or I've done some movies. I mean, I actually did one called Le Piège Américain, where I play an American CIA officer who only speaks French. And in the course of that, there's, become, there's come an expectation that I can speak French. And so I've people, heard it. It's good. Mais il y a des il y a des gens qui m'approchent dans la rue. Ils pensent que je parle français. Et maintenant, il faut que j'apprends à parler. Et, et j'aimerais aime, bien parler, pas parfaitement, mais je voudrais bien améliorer mon français. Et c'est ça que je fais maintenant. Je travaille là-dessus. And because I'm convinced that it will sell tickets to all those things, and it will help me in the streets of Montreal and of uh, of Vancouver. And so I'm really working on it. Um, is it a version of your willingness to self-tape and turn up being that good in French so that it's open doors for you in Canada? You know, good cop, bad cop, and listen, bon you know, cop, and the rest of it. You go to Italy and you speak six words of Italian, and I used all the Italian that I learned from Juan Cuarón <coughs> in the 1988 production of Taming of the Shrew that Manet did to, you know, that launched his career, no doubt helped mine enormously. Juan Cuarón was asked to give us a bunch of Italian, because he's Italian, new member of the company, he did. 1988. I remember it still. I could do it for you right now, instantly. So I went to shoot Julie Taymor's Titus in, in Rome with Tony Hopkins and Jessica uh, Lang. I used that Italian as my introductions to the drivers, to Giuseppe and Fabio e tutti. E facciamo, facciamo lavoro in Roma per sei mesi, dieci anni fa. So suddenly, they say, well, you don't say it like that. We say this, we say that. And you find yourself with 18 words of Italian, and they go, hey, thank you for making the effort. They give you more, you relax more, you feel more. This is what happens in Canada. You go to Montreal, Quebec, my default position when I walk into a shop or a restaurant in, in Montreal is to speak French badly, and then they speak to me in English if they like, or I, f I may continue in French badly. Mais ça m'aide beaucoup, hein? Ça force des choses. And for them, it's seeing l'effort que je fais. Et, et ça se voit que j'ai l'intention de travailler là-dessus. And so we get into an engaged discussion about how to do it better and what phrases to say and how not to embarrass oneself. Because God knows I've embarrassed myself using phrases that one doesn't use for various things. But it's, it's something that is ongoing. And so... I've created an illusion. I mean, it's certainly in the films when you see it, it's, it's, you know, I don't want to tell people that we have the ability to do take 37, and I can go back in and do ADR. I have to say, having revisited Bon Cop, Bad Cop in the latest version that we did, um, I'm much more relaxed. When we did Bon Cop, first, the first one, I could say bonjour et salut les gars, and that was it. Uh, most of the time for this last one, we spoke almost exclusively in French. Because, yeah, yeah, because tout le monde était français. Yeah. Et that helped me because I just felt, listen, I'm going to make mistakes now. Ten years ago, I thought I had to be perfect. Now I simply don't care. Now you go, I'm trying and I'm going to try really, really hard. I'm not going to speak your kind of French and I'm never going to convince you that I'm you. I'm never going to be seen playing a habitant or a trappeur. Jamais, jamais. Mais un Français de France, peut-être. Uh, mais mais peut-être pas. Mais un anglophone d'Ontario, absolutely. Give, uh, give me your best Quebecois accent. In well, I can't. I'm a Quebecois. Like, I have to be there listening to them with the... No, no, you know, the French. Uh, French, French. Je, je, je ne sais pas comment le faire. I don't know how to do it. If I'm with them, if I'm okay. with Patrick uh, Ura, who's our, you know, our writer and my co-star and collaborator, I pick up those 
québécois phrases and I can, je m'en calisse des fois, mais je sais comment le faire, hey, tabarnak. J'ai vu des fois, il y avait des, des moments ridicules. Il y avait The Weather Channel, qui avait un gars typique euh, à Toronto, and he was there in Toronto Island, and they had a close-up on him and his kid, and he had a beer in his hand, and they were going across the country. What's it like in Vancouver, in Calgary, in Winnipeg? And they got to Toronto and had this guy, and he had a French t-shirt on that said, je m'en calisse, which is essentially, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. And he was the star of the weather. I mean, they don't know what that means, mon dieu. It's, it's not right. But, but to Quebecers, it's hilarious. And so, you know, I, 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 I will never be one of them but I admire and appreciate. And so it's an evolving thing, and I think that's part of the fun of it, because it is. I, in, in, at one point, I asked the stills photographer, because Patrick and I, at one point in the movie, are handcuffed together, and I have me with a picture of a couple of books I'd bought while working there. One of them is the Becherel, which is this, the foundational French grammar book, and I have all of them. But the one that I understand best is uh, Ma Première Grammaire, which is for five and seven-year-olds, because it's got pictures. Lapin, le livre, tout ça. <laughs> and you know, you can see from the pictures what the things are meant to be. <laughs> and also, uh, Le Québécois pour les nuls, which is how to speak Québécois for dummies. And I have myself hand, oh, my see the And it helps, because I also have the French version of that. You know, what's cool yeah. pour parler avec les Français de France? Yeah. Et c'est vraiment différent, c'est vachement différent. Yeah. Que, euh, en parlant avec les Québécois et les Québécoises. OK, OK. So, I'm you, faking it, is the point. 